Welcome new Highlanders and congratulations on choosing UCR. Today we're going to talk about how to get you financially fit for fall. That is, there are five steps that you can take now to make sure your financial aid is ready by the time classes start. My name is Samara Blackman and I'm the Financial Wellness Program Manager and I'm going to walk you through those five steps. But before we get started on that, and on behalf of the Financial Aid Office, we'd like to formally welcome you to UCR. Our job is to support you so that you understand your financial aid and how it works and hopefully teach you a little bit about money management so that you can be successful while you're in school. But before we get started on that, let me show you how to find the Financial Aid Office and the Financial Wellness Program. For the most in-depth information about financial aid and to access some of the documents we'll be discussing today, you can visit our website at finaid.ucr.edu. Also, if you have questions, the best way to contact our office is by emailing us at finaid.ucr.edu. A great way to stay up to date with both the Financial Aid Office and the Financial Wellness Program is through Instagram. The Financial Aid Office posts up-to-date information, often explaining and simplifying in a few slides information that may seem complicated. If you hear something or have questions about financial aid, the FinAid Instagram is a great place to start. Similarly, the Financial Wellness Program, which focuses on teaching Highlanders how to manage money in school, also breaks down financial concepts that may seem complicated. In a few short slides, you can learn about budgeting, credit, or even how to manage your student loans. Plus, we host quarterly games and prize giveaways. Hint, hint. So now that you know how to contact us, let's get you started on those five steps you can take to get your financial aid ready for fall. We'll go through each step in detail, but to give you an overview, step one, you got to get prepared. How do you even access your financial aid information? We're going to show you how. Step two, review your financial aid award. There may be some confusion about what that is, but we're going to show you where to find it and how to read it. Step three, do the math. Know what your financial aid will cover. Step four, accept your award. You have to go through the formal step of accepting your financial aid award, and we will show you how. And step five, taking loans. If you're gonna be taking loans out, we'll show you how to complete your loan requirements so that you're ready to go by fall. So let's start with step one, how to gain access and grant permission to your financial aid information. As with most things at UCR, everything you need to access is gonna be on our web. And like most things in life, you need a special number to access that information. But where a lot of things require your social security number, UCR does not. To access your financial aid award and pretty much any other information on campus, you need to have your student ID. So get your student ID number ready so that you can access your financial aid award on our web. The second part of gaining access to your financial aid information is that you might want someone else to help you with this. Now that you're in college, your information is private, so no one can access your information without your permission. If you'd like someone other than yourself to review your financial aid award or other important information, you have to authorize them on our web. For detailed instructions about how to do this, you can visit the registrar's website at registrar.ucr.edu. Here, they will walk you through the process of providing access and authorization to the Office of Financial Aid, Student Business Services, and Housing. As you can see, for financial aid, you have several boxes that you have to check off if you'd like to provide permission. You can choose one or all four, it's up to you. So make sure you do this if you wanna have somebody speak with financial aid on your behalf. Let's move on to step two, reviewing your financial aid award. Now that you're a Highlander, you're gonna get to know our web really well. This is where you can access most of your student account information on campus, including your financial aid information. As you can see here, you click on the financial aid icon and this is where you'll find your award letter as well as additional financial aid information. We also want to highlight the holds icon. A hold can be placed on your account for various reasons, but if you're having trouble accessing any of your student account information, we suggest you start by checking to see if you have any holds. Once you select the financial aid icon in our web, it will bring you to this screen. 
click on award to access your financial aid award letter. Now, the moment of truth, your financial aid award letter. There are three main areas that we want to highlight. The first is cost of attendance. We're not going to go into too much detail here, but essentially it's the cost of attending UCR. This can include things such as tuition and fees or room and board, but we will go in more detail in, in the next few slides. The second box is the need calculation. The need calculation is based on information you submitted in your financial aid application. Then, based on this information, your financial aid award is generated. This award outlines what financial aid you will receive to cover your cost of attendance. One last thing we'd like to highlight is the print button at the top left hand of your screen. Sometimes you need a copy of your financial aid award letter to send to scholarship committees or maybe even just to see it in writing. Now, we're gonna go into more detail about box one. So, what is your cost of attendance? The cost of attendance can be a little bit confusing. Oftentimes people see and hear those big numbers, 30,000, 40,000, $50,000 a year, and it can be a little bit overwhelming. At UCR, your cost of attendance will depend on your housing choice. That is, are you gonna live on campus, off campus, or will you stay with family? Depending on where you choose, that determines how much your yearly cost of attendance is. To break this down, we want you to think of cost of attendance as a bucket to fill. So depending on your housing choice, your cost of attendance will vary. Depending on your housing choice, you're one of these buckets and financial aid wants to figure out how to help you fill your bucket with the money you need. Let's use living in campus apartments or off campus as an example. So what's in that bucket and what is all of this money going towards? You have these six items in your bucket. However, this is where financial aid comes in and we work with you to help you figure out how to fill your bucket. So let's break down the cost of the six items in your cost of attendance bucket. You'll see the top two items are in red. First, your tuition and fees, of course, and two one-time only fees. That is your Highlander orientation fee, which you're paying to attend today, and a one-time document fee. This provides you with access to lifetime copies of any documents you may need from the university, including your transcript. So basically you're paying now so you don't have to pay in the future. These are the only fees that are required and that you're billed by the university directly so that you can actually attend classes. In other words, you will be billed for tuition and fees, and that's around $5,300 per quarter. You're billed on a quarterly basis. In addition, this quarter only, you'll have to pay for the Highlander orientation fee and the one-time document fee. The remaining items in your bucket, those in purple, are items included in your cost of attendance bucket, but that you don't have to pay directly to the university. This includes a budget for books and supplies, personal costs such as toiletries and other items, the cost for room and board or rent and food, and transportation, which can help cover things like plane tickets and gas. But as a reminder, you are not billed for these things by the university. The only item on this list that you may be billed for directly is room and board, and that's if you live on campus. Otherwise, any financial aid you receive above the cost of tuition helps to cover these costs for you, rent, food, books, supplies, etc. Then what financial aid does is try to help you fill your bucket based on your need. Remember, in the overview of your financial aid award, it said need calculation. From this, the Office of Financial Aid calculates how much financial aid you need to help cover some or all of the costs in your bucket. Now, let's talk about how financial aid helps you fill your bucket. Based on how much you need, remember your need calculation, this determines your expected family contribution. Once that's determined, the Office of Financial Aid helps you fill your bucket with three items. That's scholarships and grants, loans, and work study. 
I'm sure most of you are aware of what scholarships are, but essentially they're awards that you've applied for and been granted. When you're awarded a scholarship, we add this into your financial aid bucket. Grants are somewhat similar in that they're free, but these are awarded based on financial need. You can be awarded some of these grants or a combination based on your financial need. Which brings us to the Blue and Gold Opportunity Plan. You may have heard about this, the UC system made a promise that any student whose household income is less than $80,000 per year will have their system-wide tuition covered. If you qualify, you'll be awarded a combination of grants and scholarships, free money to cover your tuition. One thing to note, however, the Blue and Gold Opportunity Plan will not be listed on your financial aid award. Rather, you'll have a combination of grants and scholarships, if you have them, that add up to at least the cost of your tuition. The second type of funding used to fill your bucket are loans. Loans are considered self-help aid and have to be paid back. Self-help is a way of saying that the government wants you to contribute to the cost of your education as well. Before I tell you about loan types, it's really important to acknowledge that it can be scary to take out loans. but if a loan will help ensure that you can finish school, we don't want you to be scared. So there are three loan types, subsidized, unsubsidized, and a parent plus loan. The first two are student loans, the difference being your interest rate. The good news on interest rates for student loans is that they are at an all time low. So listed here under loans, the top two subsidized and unsubsidized are student loans. The main way to remember the difference is subsidized loans mean that you are not accruing interest in school. The government subsidizes your interest and pays it while you're in school. Unsubsidized, the second loan, means that interest starts accruing once you take the loan. However, the interest is still so low that you're not incurring huge amounts of interest while in school, but you are accruing interest. So our recommendation if you're unsure about loans is to take your subsidized loans first, then your unsubsidized. And the last type of loan is the parent plus loan, which a parent can take on your behalf to fill your cost of attendance bucket. Parent plus loans also have low interest rate. So if your parent would like to take out a plus loan, this is a credit-based application. One thing to note, if for any reason your parent cannot take a parent loan, whether because of credit or it would cause a hardship on your family, you may be able to waive the PLUS loan, which makes you, the student, eligible for additional unsubsidized loan. Finally, the last and third form of financial aid that you may be awarded is work study, which is also based on financial need. You'll see this in yellow, which is aid that is not posted to your account. While this may be a part of your financial aid package to fill your bucket, you have to secure a work-study job to access the money. There are both on-campus and off-campus work-study jobs, and we encourage you to visit the Career Center if you're interested. So now we're gonna show you how to read your financial aid award. You'll remember the overview of your financial aid award on our web looks like this. So you should be looking at box three to see what combination of financial aid scholarships and grants, student loans, and work study you've been offered and will be used to fill your cost of attendance bucket. We're going to walk you through an example of a financial aid award for fall 2020. In this example, the student was awarded a federal Pell Grant and a UCR grant. This, as you'll remember, is gift aid or free money. In this example, the student was also awarded work study for the quarter in the amount of $667. Remember though that you have to secure a work study job first and then you are paid this money through a paycheck. So while it's included here as a part of your award, we're not going to include it in our financial aid total for the quarter. And finally, this student was also offered student loans and a parent plus loan. In total, if you add everything up, that's $7,518 for the quarter. Now we're gonna subtract the cost of work study because remember, you have to secure a job first. So $7,518 minus 667 means that if you accept everything, you'll have a total of $6,851 in financial aid for the quarter. Finally, 
I also want to bring your attention to the Parent PLUS loan. We know that this could be a challenge for many families, so we want to tell you what you can do if a Parent PLUS loan isn't possible for you. The Parent PLUS loan requires a credit-based application. If your parent wasn't approved for the PLUS loan or they were approved but taking the loan would cause a hardship on your family, you can request a Parent PLUS loan waiver. As the first bullet point says, if your parent or family are unable to borrow the PLUS loan, you, the student, can get additional unsubsidized loan money. This is for parents who can't borrow the PLUS loan if they have filed for bankruptcy, receive public assistance, have a high debt to income ratio and can't repay, or if the parent is undocumented and not eligible to apply for the PLUS loan. If this applies to you and your family, then you can complete the PLUS loan waiver form, which can be found on the financial aid website. Step three, do the math. What will my financial aid cover? To answer the question of what your financial aid will cover, we're going back to the award overview. Box three provides your specific award, and we're sure you wanna know how much of your cost of attendance your award covers. So now it's time to do the math. Let us show you an example of how to do just that. So let's stick with our off-campus, living off-campus budget and do the math. In this case, your tuition and fees are $5,635. Remember, for fall quarter only, they'll be a little bit higher because this includes your orientation fee and your one-time document fee. Now, looking at box three of your financial aid award, you see that you have a Pell Grant, a UCR grant, and you decided to take the subsidized and unsubsidized loan. So your fall total financial aid is $6,708. If you take this total amount and subtract your tuition and fees, you'll have a credit of $1,073. So what do you do if you have more financial aid than you owe? Celebrate, just kidding, but this is awesome. In this case, you'll receive a refund of $1,073 for the quarter, which you can use toward your housing costs, food, books, and supplies. So shameless plug, this is a great time to visit the Financial Wellness Program. We can meet with you to discuss how to budget your refund, how to make sure you cover your bills, such as your books and supplies or your personal items, and make sure that money lasts you the entire quarter. You can also reject some of the loan money or all of it. This will decrease your refund, but it will also decrease the amount of loans that you take out for the quarter. Also, a friendly reminder, sign up for direct deposit. This is the quickest and easiest way to receive your refund. Now, let's show a second example of where you might owe money to the university. For this second example, you'll remember that we had three buckets for the cost of attendance. And a reminder, your total cost of attendance is based on your housing choice. In this example, let's say you chose to live on campus, then your cost of attendance is higher at $36,257 per year. When you live on campus, you are billed for the cost of food and housing, also known as room and board. So this is the one case when you're billed for tuition and fees and room and board. Otherwise, you're only billed for tuition and fees. So in the example provided here, you're charged tuition and fees like everyone else for $5,635. But in this case, you're also charged an additional $5,783 for the cost of living on campus. So your total bill for the fall is $11,418. Just as we did with the previous example, you will now add up your financial aid for the quarter. In this case, your Pell Grant, UCR grant and two loans equal $8,934. Since you owe $11,418 minus the $8,934 that you have in financial aid, you owe the university a balance of $2,484. So if you have a balance, what are your options? First, you can make your payment in full. So in this case, your balance of $2,484 would be paid in full through credit card, check, cash, various ways. Or you can accept and apply for a Parent PLUS loan to cover the remaining balance. The last option, if you have a balance, is to sign up for the Deferred Payment Plan with Student Business Services. 
The deferred payment plan can only be applied with tuition and fees, but it splits your remaining balance into three monthly payments so that you don't have to come up with a total balance at once. Now that you've done the math, you know if you'll owe or if you'll be getting a refund, it's time to formally accept your financial aid award. Step four, accept your award. To accept your award, you're gonna go back to your financial aid account in our web. Once there, you'll go to the tab at the top that says accept award offer. As you can see, this screen lists all of the financial aid you've been awarded for the year and then divides it into the three quarters. You'll then have to manually go in and accept each award that you've been offered. And finally, is your financial aid award missing? If so, you may be missing documents, so check the requirements and eligibility link on our web. Here you will see a list of any documents you might be missing. If you're missing anything, make sure to get these documents in ASAP so that you can receive your financial aid award. So now you know how to accept your financial aid award. Step five, if you're taking loans, complete the loan requirements. If you're planning on borrowing student loans, you have to complete two requirements to do so. First, the entrance counseling, and second, you have to complete a master promissory note. The master promissory note, or MPN, is a document you sign promising to repay your student loans. If you plan to apply for federal student loans, you complete your entrance counseling and sign your master promissory note at studentaid.gov. If you're borrowing institutional loans, which are primarily for DREAMers, then your loan provider is called ECSI. You will visit the Student Business Services website at sbs.ucr.edu for more information on completing the loan requirements. The entrance counseling provides an overview of your loan information, such as interest rates and repayment requirements. Please note, however, your loans will not disperse until you complete the entrance counseling and MPN. So now that you've reviewed and accepted your financial aid award and completed all your requirements, in August, you will be billed for tuition and fees and if you're living on campus, room and board. In September, your financial aid will disperse to your account. In other words, any balance you owe when you're billed in August, the financial aid that you've accepted and completed requirements for will disperse to your account and pay your balance. As we shared in the do your math examples, you will either have a credit, which will be refunded to you, or you will have a balance that you still owe and will be due by the fee payment deadline. If there is money left over, Student Business Services will process a refund to you. And we can't reiterate enough, make sure you sign up for direct deposit as this is the quickest and easiest way to get your refunds. To know the exact date when financial aid disperses to your account and when you can expect a refund if you have one coming, we suggest you look at the academic calendar, which can be found on the registrar's website. On the academic calendar, you'll see the dates when fees are due and when refunds will be deposited into the bank account you provide once you sign up for direct deposit. If you're receiving a refund, the academic calendar shows that direct deposit refunds will be dispersed on October 1st. For fall 2020, if you have a balance, the fee payment deadline is September 15th. Now, for most of you, that closes out the steps you need to take to have your financial aid ready for fall. But before we close out, a few of you may have had some changes since you submitted your financial aid application. If you need to make changes to your financial aid award, you can request a revision on our web. Financial aid will review it and process if possible. An example of changes you might need to make are loans, for example. You may have already accepted or declined your loans and need to reinstate them or reduce them. So this is where you would make that kind of change. There are additional options available. So make sure you visit our web and see what revisions you may need to make. In some cases, the financial aid department may make revisions to your financial aid award. Your financial aid award is based on the number of units you're enrolled in. 12 units is considered full-time, and you'll receive 100% of your financial aid award if you're enrolled in at least 12 units each quarter. If you enroll in less than 12 units, or if you drop below 12 units during the quarter, the financial aid office may make a revision to your aid. The chart below outlines what percent of your aid you'll be eligible for based on the number of units you're enrolled in.
for example, if you're enrolled in nine to 11 units, that's considered three fourths time. And so you'll receive 75% of your aid. This is important to keep in mind as you're determining the number of units to enroll in each quarter. If you'd like to finish in four years, while 12 units is considered full time for financial aid requirements, you would actually need to enroll in at least 15 units per quarter. This is also important for those of you who are receiving the Cal Grant, as funding is limited to only four academic years. And finally, one last way to revise your financial aid award can be initiated by you, the student. If your parent or guardian had a significant change in income, you may be eligible to submit a change of income appeal. In some cases, your parent income may have decreased so significantly that you're eligible for additional financial aid. If this applies to you, we recommend that you contact the financial aid office and request a change of income appeal. When you contact our office, you'll be asked additional questions to determine if this appeal is right for you and your family. This appeal is done on a case-by-case -case basis, and if you're able to move forward, you'll be asked for additional documents to support your appeal. We do wanna note, if in your need calculation, your expected family contribution is zero, you have already received maximum financial aid, so a change of appeal income is not the best option for you. However, UCR has resources, so we recommend you contact our office to see what other options might be available if you're experiencing financial difficulty. And finally, one last thing to note. In order to keep your financial aid, you have to maintain Satisfactory Academic Progress, or SAP. To make sure you maintain SAP, you have to maintain a cumulative GPA of 2.0, you have to pass 67% of all of the classes you take, and you're limited to a maximum number of attempted units of 270. This is equivalent to about six years of school. Unfortunately, if you don't meet these requirements, you may lose eligibility for financial aid. So that's it. The five steps that you can take to get your financial aid ready for fall and what you can expect once you complete those five steps. So let's recap. Step one, grant permission. Remember, if you want anyone to contact our office or speak with the financial aid office on your behalf, you must grant them permission. Step two, review your financial aid on our web. Step three, do the calculations, know what your financial aid will cover, and make a plan if you owe a balance. Step four, accept your award. Remember, you can make revisions later if needed. And step five, if you're taking loans, make sure to complete your loan requirements. As a reminder, the best way to contact us is through email and everything we talked about today can be found on our website. Also, for those of you who have questions about veterans benefits, you can email vasco at ucr.edu. And finally, if you'd like some personal help, such as understanding how to budget your financial aid, the Financial Wellness Program is here. So follow us on Instagram or visit our website for more information and we hope to meet with you when you start this fall. We look forward to answering your questions today, but more importantly, we look forward to working with you in your future at UCR. Congratulations.